Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good. This one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Deborah Swanberg is suing Frank Tagg in the amount of $1,850. Ms. Swanberg claims Mr. Tagg's tree crashed into her house during a terrible storm. Mr. Tagg claims that the tree falling was a freak accident and that he helped the plaintiff pay for damages to her home. All rise. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. Thank you, Will. You may be seated. In the matter of Deborah Swanberg versus Frank Tagg, you're suing Mr. Tagg for damages caused to your property by his tree falling in your yard, uh, well, on the house itself yes. and destroying parts of the house. Yes. Um, now you want him to pay you for landscaping of your yard. Is correct. that correct? Correct. Tell me what happened. So this all started when I moved in next to Mr. Tagg. We are neighbors. And from the beginning, um, our relationship has been rocky. One of the first conversations that we had was um, him meeting my son, Billy, he's four years old, and him remarking that I should have, I should be married and that I should have a man to take care of me. Mm. And that he was surprised that I was able to pay for my house. Woo. So from then on, I knew it probably wasn't gonna be the best of relationships and it didn't stop there. Um, he also has a large dog that will frequently bark in the middle of the night, waking up my child. Um, his dog will get into my yard and ruin flowers and I other things in my yard. I don't know anything about the dog getting into Miss Swanberg's of yard. Of course you don't. So his dog causes trouble in my front yard. Um, additionally, he also has this big eucalyptus tree. And or at had. first, he had he had a big eucalyptus tree. Mm -hmm. And at first, it was just the leaves that were dropping into my yard. And I noticed that these leaves had spots on them. So I'm always curious about what things are going on and I wanna make sure that everything in my yard is safe for my child. So I looked it up online and apparently based on what the leaves look like, his tree was most likely to be diseased. And I actually have um, a sample of those leaves from his tree, just so that you can see the difference between oh. what it looks like having the spots on a diseased tree. It didn't stop at the leaves though. I also had branches about eight feet long fell into my yard and mind you, my child plays in this yard. That's a safety hazard. And I approached Mr. Tag, telling him that this was a problem, and he said that I shouldn't worry about it and that he would take care of it. So, lo and behold, a week later, there's this huge storm that happened. It was at night. My child was in my bed with me because he was terrified. Um, and then we hear a loud crash. And um, I end up going into my, to the back of my house, and I see that his tree had actually fallen on top of my house in the back of the house, which is wow. where my kitchen is located. So at this point, there's glass everywhere. Um, I can see the outside from inside my house. Oh. So it was a problem. And I actually do have a picture here um, of what the tree looked like once it crashed into my house. So it crashed into the back of my house, it crushed my fence, and it ruined the back of my yard. So at that point, I had to pack a bag, an overnight bag, so that we can go to a hotel to stay for the night, because there was no way that I was gonna stay in the house that night. And wow. I did see that he was home. So I went and I knocked on his door and I said, Mr. Tag, you need to understand that your tree has fallen into my house. And he was shaken up and he said that I should contact my home insurance and that um, he, we would take care of it because it was his tree that had damaged the back of my house. Okay. So did you contact your homeowner's insurance? I did contact my home insurance. And I do have a letter. And did they pay for the damages to your property? They paid for 80% of the interior damage. Okay. So that was rebuilding the kitchen. It cost almost $20,000. I go ahead and show him this letter, which I can show to you as well. And he decided to pay for 20%. At so he paid the difference for he paid the, difference, the damages to your kitchen. Correct. And at that point, I did inform him that there were additional damages that needed to be repaired, but I didn't have the estimates for those particular damages because, again, my home insurance was only going to cover the um, damage done to the home, not necessarily the damage done to my fence or my backyard. Interior and structural damages, not landscape. Correct. Okay. And as you can see in the picture, the yard was a mess. The fence is a mess. Um, so after the home insurance covered the 80% and he covered the 20%, I went ahead and got the yard fixed. So I made sure that I got my fence replaced. You can see there I had to pretty much uproot a lot of plants that are hidden underneath that tree. 
And um, I went ahead and did landscaping services, and that cost about $850. Now, where's that proof? I have that invoice here. So today I'm suing for the $850 as well as $1,000 for negligence. I do believe he is negligent because I informed him about his tree several times, not only with the leaves, but when the branch fell in, and he told me that he would take care of it and did not. And God forbid I was in the kitchen eating dinner with my son when his tree fell down. That could have been a very bad scenario. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. Did you know her? No, ma'am. Did you know how much money she earned? No, ma'am. How did you know she didn't earn an income that more than three earners earned? I jumped to a conclusion, Your Honor. Yeah, a real negative conclusion. And later... The capacity to me was maybe close to 200. What do you mean to you, maybe? The room has been on sign. I didn't see a sign. Oh, so. my goodness. What kind of promoter are you? We're back with the case of Deborah Swanberg, who is suing Frank Tagg for $1,850. So... What do you have to say, Mr. Uh, Tagg? So I certainly believe I am liable for the 4000 but I don't believe I'm liable for any landscaping charges. Why not? The yard was already in disrepair before this happened. So although it looks Where's great your proof? now... My apologies, Your Honor, I do not have that proof. You don't have to apologize to me. It's your case. <laughs> Point taken. Where's, well, I mean, you said it was already in bad shape. But, but you also said I owe her because I realized that it was my tree that caused the damage to her yard and to her house. I misspoke. I meant only oh, for the no, damage to the Oh, no, you house. can't take it back in my court. You spoke. You should have thought about it before you spoke, but you spoke. It's out now. I heard it. Mm-hmm. Th those were your words, not mine. So if you know and recognize that you're liable or you're responsible for the damages to her property, which was her kitchen and her landscape, now why you don't want to finish up? You're saying that the tree didn't cause the damage to the fence? The tree did cause damage to the fence. Okay, so why did you repair the fence? The fence is in the original insurance estimate, Your Honor. No, the, the, the fence, the, she said, the insurance said structural and interior damage only. My understanding was that the tree's damage to the fence and to the house is part of the insurance claim. According to this, you, your invoice mm -hmm. is not for the, for the fence. It says cleanup of the lawn, new grass being planted, and new plants. So I suppose he's correct that your fence was paid for by your homeowner's insurance. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. So now we're talking about cleanup of the old lawn. Correct. You mean that when the tree fell into your yard, no I one to, cleaned I this to up? I be responsible for that. You had to pay to clean this up? Yes. Okay. So why aren't you responsible for the clearing of all of this? I was only aware that she was charging me to fix the lawn and the, the $1,000. dollars it, the it lawn. says removal and cleanup of the lawn plus planting new grass, plus new plants. She had plants under here, did she not? Yes, she did. Okay. And the grass is damaged, part of the grass is damaged, where, where all of this stuff from the tree. Well, I didn't believe the grass is any more damaged after the fall than before. There's no way to prove that. <laughs> but I don't take pictures don't of have... her lawn before the tree fell. There was no reason to take pictures of her lawn. Right. So I was not aware that the grass was any more in disrepair after the fall than before. But she told you. So you weren't aware of it. Right. When she came to you and said, it is, I need you to pay for this, what was your response? Did you go see? Only through my part of the yard. I didn't want to trespass. The relationship was How already becoming... How are you trespassing becoming... if she's telling you there's damage to my property caused by your tree and I want you to pay for it, so you have a right to go see? I was unaware of that. I thought it would be acrimonious for me to go into oh, the property. Oh, please, spare me the bull. Uh, what did you mean to her, or did you say these words to her, I'm surprised you can afford this house? What did you mean by that? Well, she's a single woman, uh -huh. and I didn't see any evidence of two earners. So you think only two, pe two earning incomes can afford the house that she had? Nowadays, yes. So when I you, bought the did house, you know I this woman? Did you know her? Did you know her? No, ma'am. Did you know how much money she earned? No, ma'am. How did you know she didn't earn an income that more than three earners earned? I jumped to a conclusion, Your Honor. Yeah, a real negative conclusion, based upon looking at someone and deciding how can you afford this because your nose is turned down that she, a single woman, how Your could Honor, she afford that? Your Honor, my nose was not that? turned down. Yes, I did want to welcome her as a neighbor. A single woman, you thought it was to earn her income. How can you, a single woman, afford this? A bad assumption, I admit it, Your Honor. Right. But I did want to be neighborly and welcoming. Well, that was gracious. not very welcoming. That I'm was the wrong thing to say. And you need to think before you speak. 
Point taken, Your Honor. Instead of talking about how can you afford this and where is your man, as a man yourself, are you single? Are you single now? I'm a widower, Your okay, Honor. Okay, so you're single now, right? Yes, Your Honor. So, and, and, and an older man than she, why wouldn't you say, be concerned about, oh, is there anything as a neighbor that I can help you do since you're a woman alone with a child? That's the neighborly thing. I did offer to have my sister come by and babysit. Okay. If she needed a babysitter. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. But how are you going to offer your sister to babysit? <laughs> because you know, my sister... You know what? Here's what it is. My, my sister I, I took care you, of my children when my wife died. I understand that, She's but you have to have to respect for women. You can't order your sister's services for her. Oh, my sister <laughs> loves children, Your Honor. Okay. Now, that was a neighborly thing to do. Yes, sir. All right? Thank you. But think before you speak, because you could cause the greatest, you know, arguments over stuff like that. So all of this was an act of God in terms of the tree falling, except you had noticed prior to that that there was something wrong with your tree, and you didn't do it. The least you can do is investigate and perhaps make sure that there's nothing wrong. Well, I was calling the tree trimmer to come and trim the tree, Your Honor, and I felt that would alleviate the situation. Right. Was okay. to have the trees But now trimmed. you see that it was even worse. So, but, but if you owe for the beginning, you owe for the end. You gotta take it all the way through. So yes, judgment for the plaintiff for the landscaping, $850. Not the thousand dollars. You already got compensated for that. Eight hundred and fifty dollars for you to complete getting your yard back together. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay eight hundred fifty dollars. I hope you like your new yard. It sure looks a lot better than the old one. It's a shame I had to take it this far, but we still have to be neighbors, so I hope we can get past this. Coming up. The capacity to me was maybe close to 200. What do you mean to you, maybe? The room has been a sign. I didn't see a sign. Oh, so. my goodness. What kind of promoter are you? Jameen Dean is suing Darnell Bryant in the amount of $600. Ms. Dean claims she hired Mr. Bryant to promote her fashion show for kids, but only 30% of the room was filled the day of the show. Mr. Bryant claims he did his job, but says people didn't show up because it was the same time as a church revival, and others left early because the show was boring. Jameen Dean versus Darnell Bryant, you said that you hired him to promote your fashion show, a child's kids fashion show yes. and he didn't do such a good job and now you want your money back that is correct your honor okay tell me what happened all right your honor so I've been holding an event each year fashion for literacy for the past seven years and with that event I have children walking down the runway so this year I decided to take a seat back a little bit wanted to move forward and have someone else promote the event the banquet hall is uh, for rent out with $1,700 with a capacity of 300 people. I went around and I said, okay, well, who can I get to this event? I asked many friends and people recommended Darnell. So he went ahead and assured me that this was the easiest pie. This is something he's always done before. We made an agreement, we sat down and we stated with the contract that he was to bring 50% of the sales or 50% of the people to the event. And that would be a total of 150, 150. people. Mm -hmm. That is correct, Your Honor. So the day of the event, I'm there and I noticed not too many people are there, but of course, it's Sunday, some people may run late. So I'm backstage, I'm getting ready, making sure my kids are in order. I go ahead and look out, and I'm telling you, I could probably count on two hands, almost, I'm exaggerating, of how many people there were. At the end of the event, we probably had a total of maybe 90 people, which 22 of them I brought. Uh -huh. So I go ahead and I call him afterwards. I say, you know what? According to our contract, you were to bring 50% of the people there, 150 people, so now I would like my money. Let me see the contract. Did you make that kind of promise? I told her I can basically deliver. You and, said, and, did you and, promise and what, to deliver 50%? I, I sure did. All right, so did you deliver? Yes, I, I mean, I delivered up to the closest. So if she says it was only 90, you said you brought your 50%, that should have been 150. So you said it was 150 people, you can't count or she can't count, what's up? Coming up. The capacity to me was maybe close to 200. What do you mean to you, maybe? The room has been on fire. I didn't see a sign. Oh so. my goodness. What kind of promoter are you? We're back with the case of Jameen Dean, who is suing Darnell Bryant for breach of contract. There's a discrepancy in, in the amount of people okay. and the amount of uh, seats capacity for the room that was available. Okay, what's the discrepancy in the, in the seating capacity? The capacity to me was maybe close to 200. What do you mean to you, maybe? The room has been on sign. You don't have to guess. I didn't see a sign. That's oh my goodness. What 
kind of promoter said, are you? First you said it wasn't 300. Then you said it was probably 100 something. Now you're saying 200. But you said, I don't know what it was. Because well, I it never was, saw it was the rough, sign. It was roughly about 200 from Did what I've seen. Did you see the sign? I didn't see a sign. <laughs> then you can't say anything. Sure I didn't can. see a sign. Do you see what I'm dealing with, Your Honor? Right. But she she never gave me, if you look on the contract, it doesn't I am. specify. Let me read it. Sunday, March 6th. You agree the date of the event? Was yes. Sunday, March 6th? Yes. And initially, I and informed 50 her. And 50% of the room mm. where the event will be held must be filled. And initially, I told her that Sunday was already going to be a hard day I don't care what to, to bring like people. I the and, she still was, Stop. and she was still willing. She was still willing to do it. Okay, if you which, told her Sunday was right. hard. Well, why do you sign the contract and agree to do it? Well, because it anyway? I, I knew that I could still deliver, in okay, which so I, I did deliver? on my part. Why didn't you? Okay, well, she gave me a flyer, in which I have here. I started promoting. Um, I also uh, went to church as well, because I have a big youth organization there. And they told me that there was a church revival on Sunday, in which I also informed her that we were going to lose maybe potentially a lot of numbers because there's a big church revival, this which isn't is a church like one of the largest church. That's just one of the organizations that I get my guests from, which it's a children's event. So with the youth being part of the church organization, that would be beneficial to her event. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. One of the things you have to analyze in deciding what your ability may or may not be to fill a venue is to know what the competition is and what other events are taking place right. that day that may pull on the same pool of people that you're looking for. Right, that's just a portion. The church is a portion. I just wanted to inform her okay. that just to let her know if she that's still wanted to move ego. forward. She said she already booked the room. So I said, I just wanted to inform you with that. Because at that point, she could have opted out. But I said, okay, Why would I you still want to stay? Have, uh, she already... She said, nope, I already booked the room. So I said, that's fine, I'll still move forward. When I was at one of the radio stations with one of the top radio stations in, in, the, in the city, they informed me that the flyer didn't have the specific address for the hotel. You're promoting and you didn't look at that? I, I, I missed that part. I missed mm -hmm. the part that You missed a lot. Right. And you keep arguing that she could have canceled the event when she knew there was competition for another church. That's too late now. You one month prior, but you had signed this in December. That's February. I delivered... <laughs> Close to the 50% that Close. she asked. Almost doesn't count. Did you deliver 150 people? Yes or no? I had people that ah, it's left a the show. Question. It's a simple question. No. There was a lot of miscommunication. Judgment for with that. the plaintiff. See? Thank you. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $600. Can't believe I have to pay you when I did majority of the work. It's not my fault your show wasn't a success. You were supposed to fill the venue up to 50% with capacity. You didn't do that. I want my money. 